This automobile parts manufacturer is one of the largest companies in the area. The Yahagi Water Council calls upon them regularly to exchange ideas. The water quality standards for the Yahagi River are particularly strict. However, they should be seen as more than that. Here, their efforts even anticipate future legislation. The close protection of stringent water quality standards in the Yahagi River watershed has not curbed the growth of industry. With Toyota at its head, the companies from the automobile industry that are located here enjoy an output level that is among the highest in the country. When the Yahagi River became clean, Mikawa Bay came back to life. The people here take pride in the fact that their annual haul in short-necked clams is number one in Japan. Making use of government standards and funding, individuals and companies, large and small, came together and worked to restore the water environment. As a result of their efforts, the amount of pollution coming from factory effluents has been reduced dramatically. Meanwhile, household effluent has been another major and troublesome cause of water pollution. In the 1960s, metropolitan Tokyo grew at an explosive rate, and household runoff began to seriously affect water quality in the city's rivers. The Tama River, which flows along Tokyo's western border, was once a major source of drinking water for the people of Tokyo. Sadao Kojima, former head of the Tama River Purification Plant, has observed changes in the quality of the Tama River's water over the years. The Tama River was once known for being clean, and the sweet fish caught there were reputed to be particularly delicious. The water was clean enough you could drink it. Why was that? Well, we used to take our own excrement into the fields, but we became more affluent, and before the Tokyo Olympics, we stopped doing that. We had no need for it, because we had chemical fertilizers. So all this human waste was left over, with no place to go. One after the other, sewage treatment plants were built along the shores of the Tama River. But because they were unable to accommodate these massive quantities of human waste, it was discharged directly into the river. Mr. Kojima had to make drinking water, with water from this, the dirtiest of rivers. We added 100 parts per million of chlorine. Nowhere did they add that much. It was a world record, though that's nothing to boast about. The water was so dirty, that was the only way we could disinfect it. In keeping with urbanization and the growing problem of how to address household waste, the Japanese government hastened to create a sewage system. Their intention was to connect sewer pipes to every household, transport the waste to treatment facilities, and treat it in bulk there. At the time, they thought that large-scale treatment would be the most economical, and they promoted plans for giant sewage systems that would service multiple cities within a given watershed. With this watershed sewage system, individual locations didn't receive treatment. A large sewage duct running the length of a river was to gather waste along the way that would then be treated at a large facility downstream. An enormous sewage duct had to be built underground. It was like tunneling for a subway line, so progress was slow. And until the duct arrived, treatment was impossible. So upstream, they were forever dumping this waste in the river. And it didn't provide economic stimulus. The budget for sewage projects grew larger every year, and huge amounts ranging from 2 to 5 trillion yen were committed annually. But the spread of the sewage system was exceedingly slow, extending only to an additional 2% of the total population every year. 
Ms. Nakanishi was skeptical of this highly inefficient watershed sewage approach. After researching the situation thoroughly, she proposed an alternative sewage system. Most of the construction cost was for the sewage duct. It was expensive, so the extension of the sewage system proceeded slowly. What would be a more efficient approach? I suggested the idea of individual sewage systems. Ms. Nakanishi proposed that in areas having a low population density, rather than connect people to a large sewage duct, an on-site water treatment system, essentially an individual sewage system, could be attached to every home. These on-site water treatment systems are compact sewage systems that treat kitchen, bath, toilet and other water all together. They are divided into several tanks, one for anaerobic microbes that cannot live with oxygen, one for aerobic microbes that can't live without it, and settling tanks as well. The microbes clean the contaminated water, and the water that has been treated in this way can then be used again to water the garden or flush the toilet, eventually flowing out into a ditch or a nearby river. It also became clear that the construction of small-scale sewage treatment facilities was most effective for communities out in the countryside as well. Approximately 30 years ago, when a huge watershed sewage plan was proposed in Shiga Prefecture, the Aito Township chose not to participate. Located 30 kilometers from the nearest treatment facility, it was clear that it would take 20 years for the arterial sewage duct to reach them. Instead, four villages with a total population of 1,500 people joined together in the construction of a community sewage system. And within five years, every household had sewage service. Not only do individual household and community sewage systems not require much time or money to construct, but water that has been contaminated locally can be treated locally as well. Then it can be reused or discharged on land or into a river nearby. This is essentially a cyclical water purification system that makes the maximum use of nature's ability to purify. <laughs>